Do lawyers engaged in fintech and cryptocurrency need to know cryptography? If your answer is yes, and you still have no clue how this magic works, then you may want to skip this video and go straight ahead to the video where we study cryptography. If your answer is no, then welcome to this video where I will try to convince you of the importance of the knowledge for those who want to be professionals. Hi, my name is Alexei Konashevich, and in this video I will tell you a short story from my own practice. I've been practicing law for the past 10 years before I decided to go to academia. By the time when this story happened, I was already quite knowledgeable in computer science and cryptography. A friend of mine asked me if I could help him with his problem. One crypto exchange blocked his cryptocurrency and would not let him get the coins back without evidence that these coins were not a part of any illegal activity such as money laundering, well, you know it. I wasn't practicing at that time anymore, like I said, I was doing my academic research in blockchain. But I decided to help my friend because it appeared that normal practicing lawyers proposed very questionable solutions to his problem and it seems to me they were going to fail. Initially, my friend tried to explain to the exchange that he mined these coins, created these coins. The problem was that before uh, transferring the coins to the exchange, he first transferred them to his other address. For clarity, let's call the initial address where coins were created address A and the second address, well, address B. So then he transferred his coins to address B and then he sent them to the exchange address. Then he sold some coins, not all, and decided to get the rest back without selling. And at that moment the exchange blocked his withdrawal. It was a substantial value and his activity looked suspicious. Imagine you send the coins from address B to the exchange address. And because you send it not from the address where they were first created, the first thing they ask is evidence of their purchase to justify the transfer from address A to address B. They wanted to see the origin of money that my client supposedly paid for these coins. Obviously, he had nothing to show that it, it was internal transfer, uh, basically from one pocket to another. And the second circumstance that doubled their suspicion was that he didn't sell the bulk of the coins and try to retrieve them back. So you see, when users send coins to the exchange, normally the exchange provides one common address for all coins. When users of the exchange internally trade the crypto, the exchange doesn't move the coins from one address to another. These coins remain on one common address until a user wants to retrieve his portion of, of the coins. So they send them to the address which that user specifies. So all that deal with his coins looked like he tried to use the exchange as a coin mixer. First, they got to a large treasury address of the exchange, mixed up with other coins, and then retrieved back to some anonymous address uh, in a slightly different amount because he traded some portion of the coins. So the external observer looking at the blockchain ledger would not be able to match the input and the output. By the time I took this case, my friend had been trying to release these coins for a few months, but everything was in vain. One dodgy lawyer advised him to fake the deal to prove that he legitimately bought these coins from a miner. Another lawyer suggested that he initiate uh, litigation and the, and the exchange was in another country. Needless to say how expensive it could be and how long it would take. So imagine how desperate he was taking into account that neither option he could agree on and afford. The first thing I asked my friend, do you still have the key from the address A, from the initial address? Yes, he said. Have the lawyers ever asked you about that? 
no why it struck me because the solution was simple and it was always on the surface but the professionals couldn't see it because probably they didn't have basic knowledge of cryptography you see public key cryptography forms the blockchain technology what is known a cryptocurrency address in fact is a representation of a user's cryptographic public key the finalizing element of any blockchain transaction is a digital signature not this or this but a cryptographic signature a purpose to prove that the coin sender is the coin's owner the public key is mathematically connected with the cryptographic private key which is used to sign and uh, generally speaking to authorize the transaction digitally so we can summarize that the owner of the private key is the owner of the cryptocurrency attached to this specific address so if you watch this video you will understand how it works but in a nutshell the public key cryptography can be used to sign personal messages so anyone who wants to verify if you are the owner of the address can send you a text any text a random string so you take this text and using your private key from your coin address you sign it the digital signature that you get in the result of this cryptographic function you send back to the verifier the verifier takes your public key as we remember the cryptocurrency address is a representation of the public key and decrypts the text they initially sent you if you signed that text with the private key from any other address they wouldn't be able to decrypt it with the public key that they want to verify and hence will know that you don't have the private key from that cryptocurrency address most cryptocurrency wallets have in their basic functionality all the tools for signing and verifying and even sending messages between users in the blockchain network if you need a bit of practical skills on how to use them you can watch this video all the videos that I'm mentioning here you will find in the description down below so getting back to the story I started with I resolved this misunderstanding with the exchange with the click of a finger I sent a request to their support team asking them to send me a verification string explaining that my client will prove his ownership over address A by digitally signing this uh, string as a verification string they sent the hash sum of the latest block of the blockchain maybe it was a bit paranoid but it was a good call by the book so to say because if the owner signed something in the past and somehow the exchange was going to send exactly the same string which the owner had previously signed he could theoretically steal or we could theoretically steal that digital signature and present it as the proof of ownership therefore to exclude even this theoretical scenario the good call was to send the latest block hash which as as we know is impossible to predict and therefore there is no way that the owner could even sign it in the past so when they sent it i returned it digitally signed with the private key from the address a where initially these coins were mined almost immediately after that they released all the funds this is what I would expect from any professional crypto lawyer. Maybe in the future I'm going to develop a special study course for crypto lawyers as many tricky things require both uh, technical and legal knowledge. But meanwhile, follow the links in the end of this video or in the description below to learn more. Subscribe if you don't want to miss new videos and hit like if you want to support what I'm doing. Thank you and see you next time. If your answer is no, then welcome to this video where I will try to convince you of uh, the importance of this knowledge for the, 